Hello everyone. I am absolutely thrilled that this has all worked out. On my website you will find under 3D pumps a whole list of videos and instructions and information. The idea is you can go to that site, you can download the 3D instructions of four different types of pump plus a valve that makes an enormous difference if you're building submarines. And you can get them printed out and then I'll give you the videos on describing how to make them. Now these uh, pumps and this valve have been the cornerstone of the boats that I've built, scratch built. And because I've built these boats in a fairly unique sort of way, I've needed pumps like this and I couldn't buy them so I made them myself to, to very varying degrees of success. Uh, but they're successful and they've been working for a long time. So my old U-boat for example, I've just hacked off my old pump and I'm going to replace it with one of my new 3D pumps because it looks really nice, it's much much better and uh, there are some design uh, components in that which make it really watertight. It's really very good and powerful. So the idea behind this came to me a few months ago and so I put up on my on my website and on my mailing list uh, something called a 3D challenge and I asked if someone would like to help me and within seconds a guy called Roger Hardy from um, South Africa called me and no, emailed me and said I'd love to help you. So then I had a go at drawing up what I wanted, keeping in mind that this was for a 3D printer. And I sent it across to him and he said fantastic and within a day he sent me back um, five different uh, parts that I can put together to make one of these um, pumps. So that's been absolutely amazing and, and what I did then was I started trying to find someone that could uh, help me with the pump. So I went to a couple of places, I started asking around, someone, a company said oh I can do it for 170 bucks, well that's, a, that, that's, that's counterproductive. Um, and then I went somewhere else and they said well minimum is 300 bucks for whatever we do. Anyway, eventually I found a guy, Christopher, who is actually, who builds model submarines and has a three, couple of 3D printers and he printed them for me for free. So, I've got these lovely bits now for free and all I need is a motor, which for the brushed uh, pump, you know, you buy them for five or six dollars and a couple of O-rings and you're there. It's as easy as that. So. Um, as you can see, it's a very attractive uh, proposition. So what I've got is boxes underneath this video, and you'll see in the first box are the parts and the and the just some written stuff um, about the brushed motor, reversing motor that I use in in my submarines. The middle one um, addresses the build of a valve, which is a critical valve to assist you to make the pump work. Here it is. This is a, a 3D printed uh, part for this valve. And this is my finished valve that's going to go in the submarine. I've, I've chopped the top, the, the, the base off because I don't need it. This works really well. It's really easy to make and, and all of a sudden it's accessible, so I'm really pleased about that. Now what you have to do once you've got this going, of course, is you have to think about how you're going to turn it on and off and reverse it. It can just be a servo with a couple of um, micro switches on it. I use Arduino, but however you want to do that, that's completely up to you. All of the pumps are designed so that they are two types. Uh, one is one that sits in the water um, outside the boat and has to be waterproof and the other one is one that sits in the boat 
doesn't need to be waterproof, but it still needs to be waterproof around the front. So that the issues are a little bit different, but not much. If you want to do one that's inside the boat, you just need three parts printed. If you want to do it outside, you have to buy, you have to, not buy, you have to, you have to print five parts. The um, valve is just one part. And as I said, the rest in relation to the brushless motor, you'll see a bit later when I get round to it. But really quickly, let me show you the interrelationship between the um, two-way pump and the valve. Okay, very quickly, <laughs> this, this takes explanation. This is your ballast tank uh, in the boat. This is the two-way pump that you've built. This is the valve, and these tubes go right out up here to break the surface. So, when you turn this pump on, the water comes in, it pushes the air out, and it bubbles out right down here near the base of your ballast tank. When you push the water out, it sucks the air in through here and empties the tank. Now, for anyone with half a brain, you'll look at that and say, well, that's no bloody good, because what happens when you've got it turned off? The water still comes in and fills it up. The answer to that is quite true, but this valve solves that problem. I'm not going to try and explain it now, but I've got a video on this list called the valve. I made it a long time ago and it's, it explains how this works completely. The pump in-out system requires a boat to be surfaced to be used. As such, it's a system designed to lighten the boat and increase the freeboard but it must not be trimmed to go into negative buoyancy, otherwise you'll have to get your diving gear on. So the boat must be trimmed so that the conning tower is always going to bob to the surface and have the hydros pull the boat under, in other words, a dynamic diver. The pump will then lift the boat up and clear out of the water, showing lovely amounts of freeboard. The other option I have made to my boats is to add a piston within the tank. This could even be a large syringe if you're creative. And it does provide adjustments to the weight of the boat. The beauty of this is that you can easily surface and tiny adjustments to the weight of the boat enable it to be hovering in the water or diving to the bottom. Also, you're not dealing with large fluctuations in pressure in the WTC that full-size pistons generate. In my boats, I've also added two small tanks fore and aft that are connected to a peristaltic pump for fore and aft trimming. I've also added Arduino to get these systems to talk to each other, and I've also added a pressure gauge. I better stop. A final comment is that any system that you use to increase or decrease the pressure in your ballast tank will do so without pressure being created because of the subtech valve. But for a starter dynamic system, the above pump is easy and very, very cheap.